Hey yo guys, what's up? This is Sergio from Multilogin. You're probably wondering where Stan is. Well, he's off. I'm replacing him today. Today we're gonna talk about proxies, specifically AirSocks, mobile proxy provider. So what is AirSocks? AirSocks is a dynamic, ultra-private mobile proxy provider that provides proxies in such countries as United States, Russia, Ukraine, Lithuania and United Kingdom but the developers are promising that they'll bring more countries to the table uh, they say that uh, these proxies are great for such services like Facebook Instagram Google and Amazon so what is a mobile proxy essentially a mobile proxy is an IP address that is assigned to a mobile provider when a user comes to a website the website can straight away identify if this user came from a mobile residential IP or it belongs to a data center. Having a mobile IP gives a higher trust to your social accounts. So why are mobile proxies good? Essentially mobile operators only have an access to a small fraction of IPs in their pool. That means like in a such city like Moscow there are only 3000 unique IPs existing. That means that uh, mobile operators uh, use a special technology called NAT that allows hundreds, maybe even thousands of users to connect to their favorite services uh, through one external IP. What means that big sites uh, or marketplaces just can't afford to block these IPs because uh, in return, real organic users are gonna suffer and this is really bad for the business. Additionally, using mobile proxy has an advantage that instead of buying a single IP address, you get uh, an access to the full uh, pool of IP addresses given to this provider. Also, uh, using mobile proxies allows you to blend in with the crowd better, which gives you a higher trust for your social media accounts. So if everything is so good, what are the disadvantages of using mobile proxies? Uh, it's very simple. Since uh, these proxies are uh, so easily obtainable, unfortunately you cannot control who and what was done before. So that kind of uh, exposes you to a higher risk of uh, abuse, which means that maybe those accounts are and IP addresses have been flagged previously. However, AirSocks has a solution for that, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right, so this was the introduction. Let's check out what AirSocks have to offer. Let's uh, have, have a quick look at uh, their pricing, just to understand what is uh, currently in store. So I'm gonna visit their webpage. So you can see that, for example, they have Russia, uh, they offer shared IPs, which uh, we don't really recommend because of the aforementioned reasons. But if you're on a tight budget and you're willing to take a risk, you can go for it. Uh, you can see that there's a variety of mobile providers available. Uh, an average private channel is starting at around $50 and uh, essentially with a private channel you get uh, the full pool of these IPs. Um, for example, we see here private one-to-one -one, uh, port with waiting when changing IP. Essentially that means that you don't have control over when the IP changes, but after some certain time, it changes automatically. So this is one of the options. The second option is private channel uh, without waiting for the IP change. That essentially means that you have full control of when uh, you change the IP. It can be uh, done from the control panel, which I'm gonna show to you later, or via uh, an IP call. Uh, also, uh, they provide something called the multi-port. Uh, I've talked to the support for AirSocks and they've mentioned that this is used for very niche scenarios like parsing. So uh, in our review, we are not really gonna touch that topic. All right, so let's go forward. Uh, for Ukraine, you can see that uh, the only difference is that AirSocks no longer provides uh, shared channels or multi-port so the only options available here are uh, private channels essentially same thing with uh, the IP change or with uh, automatic uh, the prices are a bit higher comparing to Russia uh, next we have Lithuania not sure if that's a very popular one uh, in terms of pricing and features it is exactly the same as Ukraine 
next we have United Kingdom. Uh, the only provider right now is Free UK. We have quite a few IP addresses in the pool. Uh, prices are a little bit uh, higher compared to uh, other countries, so around 100 for automatic IP changes and around 200 for manual. Same goes for United States. So essentially, if you want to go in the United States or United Kingdom, you should be aware of how much you'll be paying for that. All right, so that's it about the pricing. Pretty solid, all uh, self-explanatory. Let's check out their control panel. Um, very nice, very tidy, no additional information. So here uh, you can essentially change if you would like to use password to access your uh, control panel or uh, it's our IP authentication. Uh, additionally, if it's really needed, uh, you can uh, change it to use individual credentials for each proxy. Uh, here we have our proxy list. The guys from Airsocks has provided us with um, free shared channels as well as less free private channels which we are planning to test a bit later so all of the control elements are available in the ui uh, you can also access the api information uh, very useful a lot of uh, useful features can be found here essentially if you're just starting i would totally recommend going through the api settings just to understand what you need to do all right so let's get down to our tests so first thing first we're gonna find out if the ips are actually really mobile for that uh, i'm gonna create a new multi-login profile all right let's call it air socks one uh, we'll leave the defa default settings because this is not uh, the topic of our today's discussion uh, essentially, you can use both SOX5 and HTTP proxies. For that, you just uh, make sure that you copy the correct port. So right now, I'm going to try Megaphone Moscow. For that, in the IP field, I just copy the host name. Uh, then I copy the right uh, port. So since we're going to be using SOX, I need to make sure that I copy the SOX port. Uh, now, next our login credentials as you can see you can send set those individually for each uh, proxy but for now i'm just gonna leave it as is uh, let's check it see if uh, it will work didn't work let's give it another try i'm pretty sure i know what was the reason all right connection test passed that is good that is a very good sign let's start up our profile and get down to the tests so uh, the way we're gonna test it right now is we're gonna use uh, whoer.net right let's open it up and find out if it's a really uh, mobile proxy in order in order to understand if it is a mobile proxy we need to pay extra attention who is our isp so originally we selected megaphone it's showing us that indeed the ISP is Megaphone and the IP belongs to them. The DNS also corresponds to Megaphone. We can see it's a Russian IP. So all seems to be looking good so far. Second feature that we are going to test is related to changing uh, the IP address. Essentially, this can be done two ways, either by using uh, API request or from the dashboard itself. First of all, let's give it a try for the, from the dashboard. So I'm clicking on rotate IP and now it shows us the success message. So this was our old IP. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And the new IP should end with a 206. All right, let's check. Refreshing the page. All right. Okay, that seems to work. So we got the right IP address. Everything else still stays the same. That's pretty good. And for the final test, we're gonna try to change the passive OS fingerprint. So what is a uh, passive OS fingerprint? Essentially, uh, this is a connection fingerprint 
that theoretically allows websites to track down your real operating system based on the packet size. Although we think that it's not critical to change this fingerprint since it's very common in the real world that uh, there is a mismatch. For example, if somebody is using a hotspot or uh, in some certain type of modems, if you feel like it'll give you additional security and success, this option is available only for air socks and we're gonna test if it actually works. So in order to change the passive OS, you need to use the same link as for the IP. However, uh, here in the end, you need to add the OS type you would like to add. So let's see, for example, uh, right now, all right, so let's see what is our current uh, passive OS fingerprint. So according to browser leaks, it's Windows 7 or newer. Uh, so right now we're gonna change it to something else. In order to change it, we need to copy the same line that was used to change the IP and add uh, the operating system that we wanna change it to in the very end. Right now as an experiment, I'm gonna add Android. Add it here copy this line and put it into your browser. It does take a few moments to refresh. Uh, then it shows you uh, the success message that the uh, operating system fingerprint has been changed. And let's see if this change has really affected our IP address. Hmm. Doesn't seem to work yet, but let's give it a few moments to refresh. Looks like it works. So. It shows that our new passive OS is Linux, although you can still tell that since we didn't change the multi-login settings, our other OS is showing uh, as Windows and there is a mismatch, but that was just a part of the experiment. All right, great, so all the tests were successful. So let's wrap this up and go to the conclusion. Essentially, mobile proxies are good. A lot of people use them and it allows you to blend in with the crowd better. Using AirSox allows you to control your IP address as well as having a unique feature of being able to change the passive OS fingerprint. Uh, the downsides of using AirSox are that uh, at the moment the list of countries is quite limited. They only offer five countries, but um, according to the team, in the future they are planning to expand to more and more locations. So it might not suit your geo right now, but in the future it also could. Secondly, you never know uh, what these IPs were used for. So you need to be very careful. Once again, we don't recommend using shared, only private. This way you can be sure that uh, these IP addresses were not abused previously. And finally, one of the downsides is that when buying one channel, you can only use one account simultaneously. So if you need to work in parallel and have more accounts available uh, straight away, the only option is to buy additional private channels. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm really hoping that this video was useful. Uh, share, like, and subscribe, and don't forget uh, to sign up for our uh, Telegram channel for all the fresh news and updates. And if you'll have any questions, be sure to drop a line to support at multilogin.com. Uh, our team, including yours truly, will be happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you for watching once again. Peace out.